Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we shall talk about another type of data flow analysis. It's called Available Expressions Analysis. It's similar to Leibniz analysis, but also different in many ways. To motivate this class, I would like to use this program. Take a look into the code. Could you tell me how we could optimize this program? Well, basically, we are computing the expression a plus b twice. I mean, we are computing it twice dynamically. That is, regardless of the path that the execution flow of the program takes, this expression a plus b will be calculated twice. So we could try to avoid the second computation. This program on the right does it. It computes dynamically the expression a plus b only once. Take a look into this program just to make sure that you know how it works and that both these programs are equivalent. You can stop the video if you want. To apply uh, the optimization, we need something called available expressions. These are the expressions, I mean the computations like a plus b, that were available at particular program points. They have been um, cal calculated before. In other words, an expression is available at the program point if its current value has already been computed earlier during the execution of that program. As an exercise, can you figure out what are the expressions available for the program on the right? We can use a data flow analysis to estimate the available expressions at any program point. I'm showing on the gray boxes the expressions that are available at the different program points of our example. So can you try to imagine why this expression a plus 1 is not available at this point with the red box? If you did it, perhaps you can answer these two questions. Namely, how does the information originate in this analysis and how does it propagate? By the way, the information that I am talking about are the sets of expressions in the program. What we know is that if an expression is used at some site, then it might be available after that site. That, of course, as long as the expression is not redefined by the instruction that uses it. We say that an expression is redefined if any of the variables that it contains is assigned. But what do we do about the instructions that do not use an expression? I mean, how do we propagate the set of available expressions across the instructions that form the program? Well, let's see. First, an expression is available after a program point P if that expression is used at P and it's not redefined by that program point P, I mean or if it was available before p and it's not redefined by p. So the information in this case propagates along the same direction as the edges of the control flow graph. We say in this case that the analysis is forward. But what if we have program points with multiple predecessors? How do we join information? In other words, if we have a join point in the program, what are the expressions that are available right after that point? Well, in this case, we must take the intersection of the expressions available at all the predecessors. In other words, an expression is available at a program point P if it's available at every path that reaches P. As we did in the case of Leibniz analysis to solve available expressions, we also associate in and out sets with all the program points. These sets will contain expressions, the expressions that are available at those points, I mean. As an example, you can see the in and out sets for this simple straight line piece of code. Can you design equations to solve this data flow analysis, like we did for Leibniz analysis before? Well, here they are. These equations show how to compute the in and out sets. They look a bit like the equations used in life in this analysis, but they are different. The first difference is that in life in this analysis, we were using union on successors to join information. Here we are using intersection on predecessors. Also, we are dealing with entire expressions and not with variables. 
By the way, can you try to figure out why we compute outsets like this? Try stopping the video and then think a bit about the semantics of this equation. Let's take a look into our original example. Perhaps this is a good time to try an exercise. Stop the video, draw the program, and then write the available expressions. I'm giving you the equations here again so that you can try to build the in and out sets of every instruction. Just in case, here's the solution of, for this exercise. And this last example concludes this class. Next time, we shall talk about yet another data flow analysis. Till there, feel free to write me with questions and or comments.